my science students often ask me why we are being taught uh, all these pieces of literature um, this poetry or essay um, the fact is that whoever we are wherever we are and whatever we do we make choices we have to make choices choices with regard to the society around us choices with regard to the human beings we deal with and we make these choices on daily basis these choices make us what we are hello everyone i am dr meet from department of english government national college sirsa today we are going to start uh, the next chapter an interview with dr christian bernard uh, this is the first video uh, the two, it would be covered in uh, covered in two lectures um, the chapter is prescribed in the syllabus of the second semester of bsc now uh, dr christian bernard was interviewed by enram uh, here is dr christian on your screen and here is enram enram um, uh, is one of the finest journalists of india he was for long the chief editor of the hindu uh, one of the leading Uh, newspapers in english uh, in india uh, and he interviewed dr christian bernard when he was on uh, a visit to india who is dr christian bernard he um, is or rather was a south african cardiac surgeon cardiac means um, dealing with heart he became an international celebrity when he with his team of 20 surgeons performed the first human heart transplant on louis washkensky at brucho hospital in cape town on 3rd of december 1967 in fact um, the news hit the headlines of all the newspapers or, or the major newspapers all over the world um, again dr bernard performed the world's first heterotopic a double heart transplant on 25th of november 1974 and uh, so uh, these are the excerpt uh, this is the rather interview with dr christian bernard who performed the first heart transplant uh, the first question and ram asks him is uh, you and your 20 surgeon team did the first human transplant how did you in, uh, get interested in the field could you give us an idea of run up to the extraordinary event in the medical history now he asks him uh, run up to means uh, the period preceding a notable event now what is the notable event ek important event se jo pehle ka samay hai ya usko ghatna kram hai usko kahenge but what is that event the event is um, that event is uh, when he along with 20 surgeons uh, that is by a big team uh, 21 people perform the first human heart transplant human because experiments were being performed on animals uh, so this was a case of first heart uh, human heart transplant in fact uh, the heart was uh, transplant means when heart is taken from the body or uh, from one uh, body and is of course transplanted into another body here it was taken from the body of a young girl who met with an accident while she was crossing a road and she was brain dead and her heart was working and it could give life to somebody and it was given to this uh, person who was there uh, waiting for the treatment um, though he, uh, he could not uh, live long because he developed other medical complications but anyway they performed the first uh, human heart transplant now the question andra mas uh, him uh, there are two questions here उनसे वो दो सवाल करते हैं दो क्वेश्चंस करते हैं वन इज हाउ डिड यू गेट इंटरेस्टेड इन द फील्ड और सेकंड इज कुड यू गिव अस आइडिया ऑफ द रन अप टू द एक्स्ट्रॉर्डिनरी इवेंट इन द मेडिकल हिस्ट्री के मेडिकल हिस्ट्री में जो जो इतना इंपॉर्टेंट इवेंट था उससे पहले क्या हुआ ऐसा किस तरह से हाउ थिंग्स लेड टू दिस इवेंट एंड डॉक्टर क्रिस्टन रिस्पॉन्स द पॉइंट दैट पीपल डोंट रियलाइज is that we at rucho hospital cape town at the stage had already been involved in 9 years of open heart surgery 
now open heart surgery uh, is a medical operation in which the body is cut open and the heart is repaired the heart, uh, yeah, the heart may have different problems and it is repaired uh, while the body is blood is kept flowing by a machine that is attached so its um, blood is carried out of the body and um, and the function, uh, sorry, the operation is performed. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Christian says that if uh, people do, uh, don't realize, because of course, uh, human beings have this tendency to dramatic, uh, they like the dramatic things. Uh, but he says it was just a step ahead, uh, uh, one step ahead or one step up, because he says we have been performing these kinds of operations uh, uh, like open heart surgery is then ke hum operations jo the wo pehle hi kar rahe the uh, and we have been involved in this uh, and so they had a long experience of it uh, for nine years they have been doing these kinds of surgeries and here he is, uh, uh, I think, uh, I'm not a science student or a medical student, but uh, roughly if we can understand what the function of uh, heart in our body is, um, it is um, that the blood that needs oxygen uh, is deficient in oxygen comes to the heart and um, it goes to the lungs where he uh, picks up oxygen and uh, this blood which is oxygen rich or what we can say a oxygenated now is pumped back to the body so this is um, broadly we can say uh, is a function that heart performs uh, uh, now this is uh, uh, what they call heart lung machine because as we noticed that uh, the oxygenation or the process of uh, adding oxygen to blood uh, includes two organs one is uh, heart and second is lung so um, this is heart lung machine and the purpose of this heart lung machine um, is um, uh, that it takes it or it we can say it performs the function of heart uh, for the time being mm -hmm. uh, the uh, oxygen poor blood uh, leaves the heart to enter the heart lung machine and then machine forms and adds oxygen to blood before it again returns to the body so uh, while this happens outside the body they can operate on the heart so um, they have been doing this he says uh, for long uh, we started in 1958, we means uh, he and his team of doctors, uh, using the heart lung machine to do major operations inside the heart. Uh, the translate, uh, transplant was really just a progression of our ability to tackle bigger and bigger operations until round about 1960s, we realized that there were certain patients whom we could help only by removing their hearts and putting in new hearts. There were no mechanical devices available. We still don't have them. Now he says, um, he explains that how uh, it was not um, a something that happened suddenly. It was just a progression. Now, uh, uh, transplant as I explained is uh, taking a, live, a living tissue or an organ and implant it in another part of the body uh, for example we can take it from one part of the body and implant it in another part of the body or into another body uh, progression means the act of changing to next stage of development uh, so here he says that because he has already explained that they have been doing these kind of operations for nine years no for no for sorry for nine years they operation so they had experience in that so ye jo tha wo ek step aage tha bas usme koi bahut sudden development nahi thi and they have been doing these operations with the help of heart lung machine jo abhi humne dekha to do major in, uh, operations inside the heart ke wo usko use karke wo heart pe operation karte the was really just a progression of our ability to tackle bigger and bigger operations aur ye jo tha ke wo ek uske sath jo hamari jo professional abilities thi wo increase ho rahi thi badh rahi thi aage aur 
अराउंड नाइनटीन वो कहते कि हमें ये रियलाइज होने लग गया देट देर वॉज सच एन पेशेंट हार्ट कुड नॉट बी रिपेयर कि हम ओपन हार्ट सर्जरी तो कर देंगे लेकिन उनका जो हार्ट था वो रिपेयर uh, नहीं हो सकता था सो ओनली ऑप्शन वॉज टू पुट एन अदर हार्ट इन प्लेस ऑफ दैट हार्ट टू रिप्लेस दैट हार्ट सो रेदर देन इंस्टेड ऑफ रिपेयरिंग दैट हार्ट दे नीडेड टू रिप्लेस दैट हार्ट कि उस हार्ट को uh, वो रिपेयर uh, नहीं कर सकते थे ठीक नहीं कर सकते थे तो जरूरत क्या थी कि अब उसकी जगह पे उसको रिप्लेस कर दिया जाए टू टैकल मीन्स टू डील विथ समथिंग और सम वो कह रहे कि नेक्स्ट ये सिर्फ स्टेज थी कि हम बेटर उससे भी बड़े जो ऑपरेशन थे वो डील कर सके बस ये डेवलपमेंट थी uh, और ये फाइनली हमने रियलाइज किया कि uh, कुछ पेशेंट्स को हम तभी हेल्प कर सकते हैं जब उनके हार्ट को रिप्लेस uh, कर दिया जाए so to sum it up it was natural progression of open heart surgery you needed the introduction of what is called extra corporeal circulation to be able to shunt the blood away from the heart and then artificially oxygenate it and pump it well uh, now corporeal means relating to the physical material body um, as opposed to the spiritual one and uh, so uh, here uh, extra corporeal means um situated or based outside the living body and in this context of course means uh, outside the body so he says that if i have to sum up or to conclude what i am trying to say that it was a just a natural development uh, as we were developing our techniques or new techniques or we were growing professionally it was just another step um uh, in the field of open heart surgery uh, and what we needed was he says uh, was the extra corporeal circulation of uh, blood jo uh, abhi humne dekha piche jo open uh, uh, jo heart lung machine ki help se uh, ke kis tarah se jo blood hai wo extra corporeal means outside uh, body jo hai usko shunt the blood away shunt means to move someone or something away so body se bahar jo hai usko shunt uh, yani ke uh, the blood was moved out of the body and of course oxygenated there artificially oxygenated there and then pumped back to the body usko dobara body mein bhej diya jata since the technique was introduced the milestones in cardiac surgery were the introduction of new surgical techniques um, and um, milestone um, uh, agar hum roads pe dekhein to this is uh, on the road it shows the distance of various places especially to the uh, ne- nearest large town or place uh, but it it um, represents a significant stage or a point in development in any uh, area or field so ek jo important development ki stage aati hai usko hum uh, milestone keh dete hain so Uh, he is saying that this was uh, an important milestone in the cardiac in heart surgery uh, uh, for new surgical techniques were introduced nayi jo surgical techniques thi wo introduced hui thi first it was mainly congenital heart defects that we operated on then we started working on the wall we introduced artificial valves then of course we started with bypass surgery and so we were just going on and all the transplant was the introduction of a new surgical technique so he says uh, we were moving from one uh, um, stage to another then to another stage and um, he says in the beginning it was congenital uh, that means uh, condition or disease that exists from birth जो बचपन से जो पैदा होते ही रहता है कोई कंडीशन होती है दोस काइंड ऑफ हार्ट डिफेक्ट्स जो बाय बर्थ ही लोगों में थे उनको ऑपरेट करना शुरू किया देन वी स्टार्टेड विद वर्किंग ऑन द वॉल वॉल यू ऑल हैव आई थिंक मस्ट हैव हर्ड एंड दे स्टार्टेड रिप्लेसिंग इट विद और यूजिंग आर्टिफिशियल वॉल टू रिपेयर द हार्ट देन दे स्टार्टेड डूइंग what he calls bypass surgery bypass surgery um, is again a heart surgery or rather an open heart surgery that is done when the blood vessels that feed uh, the heart are too clogged to function properly uh, so what they do is um, they 
bypass the passage because the blood cannot pass through that passage because it's blocked so us wahan se wo nikal nahi sakta clogging ki wajah se clog hone ki wajah se block hone ki wajah se to usko bypass kar dete hain surgery karke usko kahin aur se jod ke to jo blood hai wo kahin aur se it circulation keeps on so next jo tha ke hum वो कह रहा है कि हमने जो नई नई जो सर्जिकल टेक्निक्स थी वो हम इंट्रोड्यूस करते रहे पहले हमने जो बाय बर्थ डिफेक्ट्स थे उनको ऑपरेट करना शुरू किया फिर वॉल्व को फिर आर्टिफिशियल वॉल्व और उसके बाद जो था सो व्हाट ही इज ट्राइंग टू से इज दैट ओपन हार्ट ट्रांसप्लांट वाज जस्ट वन स्टेप इन दिस प्रोग्रेस के इस ये जो वो टेक्निक एक के बाद एक डेवलप कर रहे थे ये उसी सीरीज में एक नई डेवलपमेंट थी कुछ बहुत सडन चेंज नहीं थी नो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन डॉक्टर क्रिश्चन इज आस्ड इज यू बोर्न एंड रेज इन अपार्टाइड साउथ अफ्रीका हाउ डू फील दिस एज अ यंग मैन पर्टिकुलरली आफ्टर यू बिकेम एक्टिव एज ए सर्जन नो हेयर वन वर्ड हैज बीन यूज Uh, apartheid now before we um, uh, see uh, what how or how uh, dr christian responds to this question we uh, need to understand what does this mean now apartheid uh, was um, actually uh, in uh, mean separateness it was a system of racial discrimination that governed south africa for almost 50 years uh, there were 140 apartheid laws um, there were about all kind of things um, public spaces were separated for whites and non whites people had separate facilities including homes and restaurants non whites that was uh, that meant blacks indians and colored people if you i think uh, any of you remember the his, uh, remember history um, and there is reference when when we uh, read about mahatma gandhi and indian uh, freedom movement there is reference to certain events in south africa so uh, that's what we are talking about so uh, now non whites were blacks indians and people colored people which were uh, the people of mixed race and very few rights were given to non white races they had to carry id card all the time on the street any time uh, they could be asked to prove their identity in their own country uh, communication between the races were very limited uh, they were not uh, like as as uh, it has been mentioned that there was a separateness and uh, places even public places were separated there were uh, separate benches um in transportation in restaurants um people were uh, colored people were not allowed to enter uh, all white restaurants so the spaces were uh, totally separated and uh, therefore communication between them uh, was very limited interracial marriages and relationships were strictly prohibited um a man or a boy from uh, one race was not allowed to marry um, the girl from other race um, and uh, or and they were not supposed to fall in love so this was the kind of situation or this kind of policy and this policy was made official by the government um, uh, this is what he is talking about it was um, this is what called apartheid and um, Uh, so here are few images in front of you uh, that would make you understand what this was all about so public spaces were as i said separated for whites and non whites so here it is written uh, blacks uh, that is uh, non whites only um, again this is a uh, notice board displayed for use uh, by white persons only Uh, so here are townships and homelands in front of you uh, these were uh, the underdeveloped uh, racially segregated urban areas that were reserved for non white and these uh, hometowns homelands rather uh, were not industrially developed um, and uh, there was a situation that sometimes the men uh, have to migrate 
uh, to work other parts of the South Africa and uh, they were migrant labor in their own country. So um, uh, they, there was a long struggle, there was a long opposition uh, to this policy and uh, people protested. Uh, if you, I think many of you must have heard of Nelson Mandela who was arrested and jailed for 28 years and but finally uh, he became the first black president of South Africa in 1994. Uh, so we'll go back to the question now we understand what this policy was this policy of racial discrimination in Africa. Uh, so he is asked this question that you were born and raised in apartheid South Africa. How did you feel about this as a young man, particularly after you became an active surgeon? And his answer is, uh, at the beginning as children, we were not so much aware of apartheid because we did not have the laws in those days that actually forced you to discriminate. He says it was uh, not a policy when I was a child. Apartheid, as uh, I told you, it was a system of racial uh, discrimination. So he says, uh, when we were young, when we were children, we were not even aware of this, uh, that there, that separateness or uh, that separation of races. Or uska karan tha, or karan kya tha, that there were not laws. Uh, maybe there was social discrimination. But there were no laws which forced people to discriminate. Now, uh, we must understand that um, this official policy of apartheid, uh, it put laws in place and made people discriminate. So, at that time, because these laws were not in place, we were not aware of this. But we became uh, more aware of it uh, after 1938, after the election, when the National Party came to power and made the laws that said you had to sit on separate benches, you had to go into separate areas, you were not allowed to go with a colored girl or vice versa. No, uh, colored means in South Africa, the word is used. Colored means also uh, of black or brown race. Uh, here it also meant, uh, here in Africa, it meant to uh, describe a person whose parents uh, were from dif different races, of mixed race, it means. And uh, vice versa means what has been said before, it is also tree, true in the opposite order. Here, for example, you were not allowed to go out, go out with me. Uh, having an affair or taking her on, uh, her on date, uh, uh, you cannot, you could not go on a date with a uh, colored girl. So, and on the other hand, you cannot take um, a, a white girl could not go out with a black boy. So, both things were true. So, he says it was in 1938. Uh, historically, he uh, tells uh, certain facts about it. Okay, 1938 mein when National Party came to power, so they made laws. And after that, there were rules that you have to sit on separate benches, that you have to sit on separate benches, that you have to sit on separate benches, that you have to sit on separate places, that you have to go to areas, and that the colored girl hai, uh, uske saath white boy uh, could not go out and a white girl could not go out with a black boy. So these uh, laws were put into place. For me, it was totally unacceptable situation because my father was a missionary and grew among us the non-white people of the country. Uh, missionary means a person sent on religious mission, especially one sent to promote Christianity. And uh, many of these uh, people, white people, are uh, of Dutch ancestry or French. Uh, they are European of, of European ancestry, of course. Uh, he says that it was not very acceptable to me. And reason was that my father was a missionary. He was a religious person who was spreading the message of Christianity and grew among us the non-white people of the country. We were the non-white people. So, it was not an acceptable situation when these laws were made. To us, it was quite usual. Quite usual means normal. Ek routine ki baat hi liye. To have non-white people in our house, they had tea with us, had dinner with us. Uh, my father, being a very religious man, thought that apartheid, uh, apartheid was against the teaching of God. 
एंड ही सेज हमारे जो रूटीन था उसका वो पार्ट थे नॉन वाइट पीपल दे वुड कम ओवर टू आर हाउसेज विल हैव टी विद दैम डिनर विद दैम विल सिट विद दैम सो स्टेइंग ऑन इन सेपरेट स्पेसिस वॉज नॉट एन एक्सेप्टेबल सिचुएशन टू अर्स और क्योंकि मेरे फादर वो कहते हैं कि एक रिलीजियस पर्सन थे और उनको ये लगता था कि ये जो पॉलिसी ऑफ रेशियल डिस्क्रिमिनेशन है ये जो डिस्क्रिमिनेशन की पॉलिसी है वो गॉड uh, की टीचिंग के खिलाफ है इट वॉज अगेंस्ट द टीचिंग्स ऑफ गॉड एंड बिकॉज इट वॉज अगेंस्ट द टीचिंग्स ऑफ गॉड एज ए रिलीजियस पर्सन ही कुड नॉट एक्सेप्ट इट he said to me many times after national party got into power you know when they asked god what the most important commandment was um, god said you must love god with your heart and soul and the second one equal to that was you must love your neighbor as yourself my father said how can you love your neighbor as yourself when you are you practice these discriminations Uh, commandment uh, is an order uh, or here a divine rule uh, with reference to uh, bible especially uh, one of the 10 commandments that have been uh, given for christianity to wo keh rahe ki jab 10 commandments jinko ke ek christian ko follow karna hota hai to un वो कहते हैं कि जब नेशनल पार्टी पावर में आई तो माय फादर सेड टू मी मेनी टाइम्स बहुत बार उन्होंने मुझसे ये बात कही कि व्हाट व्हाट आर द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट कमांडमेंट्स ऑफ गॉड एंड ही सेड ही रेफर टू टू कमांडमेंट्स उन्होंने दो कमांडमेंट्स का जिक्र किया वन वाज दैट यू मस्ट लव गॉड विद योर हार्ट एंड सोल तो पहली तो यही थी कि यू शुड लव god with complete devotion uh, with your heart and your soul and second one equal to that utni hi important ek aur thi that was you must love your neighbor as yourself there is in fact it's written love thy neighbor as thyself uh, that you must love your aap apne padosi ko bhi itna hi pyar वैसे ही प्यार करेंगे जैसे खुद को इसका मतलब क्या है कि यू वुड कंसीडर हिम एज मच ह्यूमन बीइंग एज यू कंसीडर योरसेल्फ एंड यू वुड लव एंड रिस्पेक्ट दैट पर्सन एज मच यू वुड लाइक टू लव योरसेल्फ एंड रिस्पेक्ट योरसेल्फ और वो कहते हैं कि ये कमांडमेंट अगर हम पढ़ते हैं उसके बाद uh, आपके दिमाग में ये क्वेश्चन जरूर आता है एंड हिज फादर ऑल्सो आज दिस क्वेश्चन दैट How can you love your neighbor as yourself when you practice this discrimination? Uh, these discriminations, कि जो laws बना दिए गए apartheid में discriminate करने के लिए जो लोगों को force किया गया कि आप ये discrimination करो, वो अगर हम कर रहे हैं, तो फिर हम इस इस God के दिए हुए rule को कैसे follow कर सकते हैं? नहीं कर सकते हैं. So he says that that's why he says it was against the word of God. so we as a family always opposed and fought against apartheid so he says that uh, by giving these examples that we as a family were opposed to the idea of this discrimination racial discrimination and we also uh, opposed it and we actually fought against it people think that everybody who opposed apartheid was in jail that was not quite correct For example in 70s uh, I gave the lecture to the South African Chamber of Commerce uh, and the title of my talk was why we deserve to be called nazis compare the laws that the nazis made against jews to the laws that apartheid made now um, he says that uh, people have this misconception ke jisne bhi um, is racial discrimination ki policy ka opposition kiya oppose kiya isko wo sab ke sab jail chale gaye they were put into jail but it was not quite so he says uh, that we did uh, oppose it and we fought against it aur usme se wo example deta hai ki maine ek lecture diya the south african chamber of commerce mein uska title kya tha why we deserve to be called nazis aur usne nazi germany ke jo laws the against jews usko apne country ke jo laws the against black uske sath compare kiya now again we have to go back uh, and understand the historical uh, context of the things uh, who were nazis nazis uh, Uh, they were member of the national uh, socialist party led by adolf hitler which controlled germany from 33 to 45 in 39 to 45 we have second world war this is the germany after suffering a setback during the first world war um, and uh, this 
philosophy uh, represented certain ideology and it favored authoritarian political and e economic system dominated by single uh, racist, racist uh, uh, dictator and um, uh, there was a feeling of uh, uh, hostility and discrimination against Jews uh, in Nazi Germany and Jews are the people who follow uh, the religion of uh, Judaism. Uh, now, um, uh, they, of course, they have uh, Christianity and Jews have uh, have the common uh, um, beginning of their religion, but they then they went separate ways and a rivalry developed. Uh, so we will uh, just go back in history and try to understand what was happening. Now. Uh, Hitler did not, uh, first of all, we, uh, when, whenever um, reference to Jews uh, comes, uh, we think of Hitler, but Hitler did not invent the hatred of Jews. Jews in Europe had always been victims of discrimination and persecution since Middle Ages, often for religious reasons. Uh, even, uh, um, I do remember uh, in one of Shakespeare's plays, um, the character uh, Shylock, he is a Jew, and he uh, he says that he in the public places, um, as a Jew, he is humiliated uh, uh, by the Christians. So um, it it was not something new. In fact, uh, um, they were presented as rebe uh, rebels against God and murderers of the Lord. This is how they were represented histor historically, and uh, therefore. Uh, they were hated. Uh, political and economic uh, discrimination they faced in Europe. Um, they were not. Uh, they were segregated. Uh, they were not allowed to enter certain professions, um, and still, uh, uh, they they were very um, um, in trade and commerce. They played a very important role. So, who uh, that Nazi Germany came before? जो जीवस थे, जो जीवस फेथ को फॉलो करने वाले थे, और जो जैसे मैंने कहा कि उनकी जो बिगनिंग है वो एक है, लेकिन उसके बाद वो सेपरेट वो रस्ते चले जाते हैं क्योंकि दोनों ही सिंगल गॉड की वर्शिप में बिलीव करते हैं, तो वो जो हेट्रेड थी वो पहले से थी उनमें और यूरोप में उनको अलग-अलग ढंग से डिस्क्रिमिनेट किया जाता था उनको अलग सेग्रीगेट किया जाता था सोसाइटी में कई पोजीशंस कई प्रोफेशंस में उनको एंटर होने की जो थी परमिशन नहीं थी पर ट्रेड एंड कॉमर्स में खास करके जो मनी लेंडिंग थी क्योंकि जो मनी लेंडिंग जो एक ऐसा प्रोफेशन था जो क्रिश्चियंस ये कहते थे कि हमें नहीं करना चाहिए तो वो जो था वो ड्यूज वर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ दैट प्रोफेशन तो दे हैड दैट रोल टू प्ले इन सोसाइटी एंड देन दिस डिस्क्रिमिनेशन जो ये रिलीजियस स्पेस पे थी वो रेशियल टर्न ले लेती है और जो नाजी जर्मनी जब आता है तो उसमें सुपरमेसी ऑफ आर्यन रेस के जो आर्यन रेस है वो सुपीरियर है और बाकी जो जैसे कि ज्यूज हैं ये हमारी जो रेस को करप्ट कर रहे हैं इम्प्योर कर रहे हैं नो ज्यू दे फोर मे बी अ मेंबर ऑफ द नेशन हिटलर राइट्स इट एंड व्हाट डज इट मीन कि हम ज्यू को सिटीजन uh, भी नहीं मानेंगे uh they were considered subhuman they were not given human uh, equal human status and their businesses were targeted on buses train and park and benches you had to sit on seats marked for them so there were separate places for them so it is similar kind of policy that a uh, apartheid uh, in south africa put in place so marriage and between jews and non jews was forbidden uh, ghettos were often uh, they were they were forced to live in ghettos and they were often enclosed districts that isolated Jews from the non-Jewish population. Unka ek alag sa area tha, jisme wo restrict hoke rehte the. And then finally, of course, uh, there was uh, violence against them, Holocaust. Uh, that was the ideological and systematic state-sponsored persecution. Uh, 
uh, of or we can say mass murder of millions of European Jews in Germany that happens in the gas chambers and camps and uh, that is one of the darkest periods of history so that is the background he is talking about when he says that I compared the policy in my country the apartheid policy and compared it to the uh, uh, policy of the Nazi government uh, against the Jews, he is making this comparison. Uh, so it was essential for you to uh, or necessary for you to understand this is not part of your syllabus but just to understand that. Um, so, for example, the Nazis had job reservation, Jews could not enter certain jobs which was the case uh, also with the apartheid. So, uh, Dr. Christian Berner tells us that uh, he gives how uh, he made this comparison. So first is just like Nazis ne uh, jobs reservation kiya tha in the sense ke Jews ko kuch jobs mein enter honne ka right hi nahi tha. Isi tarah apartheid mein jo blacks the, browns the, uh, colored people the, Indians the, unko bhi kuch uh, jobs mein uh, they could not enter certain profession. Uh, the Nazis had certain areas where the Jews could not go and could not sit. They said Juden were verbatim that means uh, Jews not allowed or prohibited कि यहाँ Jews नहीं आ सकते हैं इसी तरह कहते हैं हमारे यहाँ क्या है Africa की वो बात कर रहा है we had whites only जहाँ पे सिर्फ whites जा सकते हैं यानी के non whites नहीं जा सकते हैं the Nazis had ghettos we had the townships उनको ghettos में उन्होंने restrict कर दिया कि Jews यहीं रहेंगे और जो Africa में उन्होंने townships में जैसे हमने पीछे पीछे images जो देखी थी so I compared apartheid laws with the laws that Germ Nazis uh, brought in. I must say the talk was not uh, popular. Or वो कहता है कि मैंने इस तरह से ये comparison किया कि जो Nazi की Germany था और which is not considered a positive uh, uh, political phase of Germany. Uh, उसके साथ compare किया कि जो हमारे यहाँ की policy है racial policy है बिल्कुल वैसी है और वो कहता है कि ये जो टॉक थी वो बहुत पॉपुलर तो नहीं रही गेटोस एस आई टोल यू आर ऑफन इनक्लोज डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स दैट आइसोलेटेड ज्यूज फ्रॉम द नॉन ज्यूज पॉपुलेशन टाउनशिप्स जो थी रेफर टू द ऑफन अंडर डेवलप्ड रेशियली सेग्रीगेटेड अर्बन एरियाज दैट वर रिजर्व फॉर नॉन वाइट्स नेमली इंडियंस एफ्रीकन्स एंड कलर्ड पीपल सो आई थिंक दैट वॉज ऑल फॉर द डे um we will uh, see each other uh, in the next video on the same uh, chapter that is an interview with uh, dr christian bernard and continue with it uh, till then uh, stay home stay safe thank you